Good morning and welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. We're excited that you're turning in today and looking forward to continuing our series about the King James Bible. And today we're dealing with the subject of having faith in the Scriptures. So I want you to take your Bibles and go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read verses 13 through 17 this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 13 to 17. Go ahead, get your Bible out, get your Bible app open up, whatever you need, and let's turn there this morning. Are you there? Good. The Bible says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which shall be able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Let's have a word of prayer this morning and we'll dive into our lesson today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for the opportunity to come to you in prayer. And Lord, we pray today uh, for our session time together, Lord, that you would be pleased and everything would be an encouragement and a help to those that watch this video. In your name I pray, amen. Here the Apostle Paul, he's concerned about theological defection and deviating from sound doctrine contained in the scriptures. Now in this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 3, look what he says in verse number 1. This know also that in the last days, oh how we're living in the last days, that perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. In verse number one, he reveals the dangers of the perils of apostasy, the danger of apostasy. In verses 2 through 9, we read a section there of that. He reveals the descriptions or the properties of apostasy. Look where they are, all those characteristics of them. Verse 6, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, not a, now as James and Jamboree's withstood Moses, so there also resists the truth. Men of corrupt minds reparate concerning the faith. There's some descriptions of some people who struggle with the danger of apostasy. Verses 10 through 17 reveals the deliverance or the, how to have the protection from this apostasy. You know, we live in an area of theological deception and defection. Liberalism here in, in America especially denies the credibility of God's Word. They say it's just another book. It's nothing special. It doesn't have any power. It's just like any other book. And they deny the credibility. Or they, they even go after the writings themselves. Neo-Orthodoxy denies the identity of God's Word, the identity of it. The evangelical movement even has begun to deny the reliability of God's word. And they say to us, it's really not dependable. It could say this, it could mean that. They have their own private interpretations of what scripture is saying. Now, there's some ways that they do this is that they say that there's no historicity, that Adam and Eve were not real people. They believe in theological, the theistic evolution, that God used evolution to bring about the course of this world. They, they say that there's an errant infallibility, that God's word is not infallible. Now, if you've been with us through this series, you know that we believe here at Bible Baptist Church that we have the infallible, preserved word of God. A fundamentalist should continue to trust the scripture and let it speak for itself. The Bible Baptist Church, we're an independent. That means we're self-governing. We're fundamental. We hold to the truths of the word of God and its purpose is there. Here in 2 Timothy, Paul affirms his undiminished confidence in the absolute infallibility of God's word. 
He unfolds the marvel of the scripture and sheds light on its most powerful characteristics. The character of God's word. Let's look at verse 13. And from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Holy scriptures. They're sacred writings. The, the phrasing there, tahera gramata, the message is directly from God. It has a harmonious hold. You know, how many books are in the Bible? How many? That's right, 66 books. Do you know how many authors? 40 authors. 40 writers that penned. Over 1,500 to 1,600 years it took to compose the Word of God. It's woven together by one central personality, Jesus Christ. Jesus is seen throughout the whole book. It is filled with timeless issues. God and man, sin, salvation, time and eternity, heaven and hell, creation and redemption. The Bible is such a unique book. It's universal in its appeal. The writer A.T. Pearson, not P-E-A-R Pearson, but P-I-E-R Pearson said this, The Bible is the greatest traveler in the world. The Bible is the greatest traveler in the world. The word penetrates every country, civilized or uncivilized. When people get a hold of the word of God, it changes their lives. Secondly, the word is seen in the palace and in the poorhouse. The Bible's not distinct. Uh, it's only going to be for the rich people or the poor people, for those with position or those with power. No, it is for every man, woman, boy, and girl. The word is a friend of kings and of beggars. The word may be read by dim candles in the Arctic snow or by the glare of the blazing sun at the equator. The word may be read in the city and country and crowds or all alone. The word appeals to and transcends all cultural, social, intellectual, and racial barriers because the message doesn't reach the head of man but the heart of man. The Word of God transcends every culture, every creed, every race, every intellectual ability, every social status. The Word of God reaches to the heart of man. The Word of God has been preserved. We mentioned that last week in our video. In spite of the perishable materials that it was written upon, those old manuscripts, in spite of the attacks which the Bible has been subjected to, the Bible remains frequently challenged but utterly unscathed. There's no book like this book. It influences individuals, whole communities, societies, entire civilization. My friend, this morning, has the Word of God influenced you? Now, in verse 15, there's a rescue of God's word. It says that the, you've re, he's known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. There's a goal for the word of God, the salvation of mankind. God's word is able to make thee wise unto salvation. It is powerful. The word has a power that is extraordinary. It's evident and it's efficient. In 1 Peter 1, 23, the Bible talks about being born again by the word of God. Romans 1, 16, it is the power of God unto salvation. Now, Rome had military power, but internally and morally, they were impotent. Rome was a cesspool of iniquity. Seneca said that Rome was the filthy sewer into which the dregs of the empire flooded. What a description for a city of how filthy and abominable it was. Scripture is powerful to bring radical rescue and deliverance from destruction, both temporal and eternal, out of Ephesians chapter 2. Transforming. Nothing can do what the Word of God can do. It can change a person's life. It can liberate them and transform them. There were many messages then as today. In the time of Paul, the Greek intellectualism, the philosophy of this world. Roman legalism, the law of Caesar, the Hebrew Judaism, the rabbi, the Pharisees, the tradition, all of those things were present in Timothy's era. But what was important was the word of God. Society says, be good, help the poor, get confirmed, join the church, and more. But what does God say? 
God says that he can rescue a man's soul and life through the power of the word of God. The origin of God's word, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable. Now, I want you to notice something. It says all scripture, comprehensive of God. All parts, verbal, plenary inspiration. We've talked about that. The great miracles that are found in the word of God, the amazing things and the mundane. You know, as some people would read the word of God, they would say God's word is boring. If you say that God's word is boring, you haven't read it. All the amazing things that are found there in the word of God. We're not at liberty to pick and choose, direct or judge ourselves. Romans 3, 4 says, let God be true and every man a liar. It's God breathed. It's got trustworthiness. Isaiah 45 says, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. 2 Peter 1, 21, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit superintended the reception and the recording of the divine message by human authors so that they were preserved from mental errors and mechanical blunders. The scriptures are supernatural. The word of God defies logic, analysis, or explanation. It is of God and is accepted as thus by faith. A combination of the divine spirit and a human servant gave us the Holy Scriptures. The profitableness of God's word is found in verses 16 and 17. It's ophimelious, serviceable to the moral and spiritual needs of man. The word develops our belief system. It's the doctrine. It, it erects truth, right thinking, and reproof. It beats down falsehood and challenging error. This Bible, it's good for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's not just words to read, but it's words to live by. It should affect your life. It's not just information to hold, but information to implement into our lives to do what God would have us to do. Behavioral patterns, the conduct for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It helps us set a new moral course by restoring our fallen behavior with correction. That leads to disciplined education. That leads to right moral living. The word established our integrity. It's doctrinal. We need an erecting of truth and a refusing of error in our life. Oh, today, how important it is to have the doctrine of the Word of God in your life, to know what you believe and why you believe it. It's moral. It's correction and instruction to help defeat our fallenness and embrace righteousness. Now, I know atheism cries out, well, I can be a moral person and still not believe in God. Well, that would be true, but you don't have God's morals. You have your own subjective morals. And a lot of times people who don't believe in God, who don't believe in the word of God, their morals are subjective to time, situation. We call them situational ethics. Is it ever okay to lie? Well, God's word says that men should not lie, but to speak every man the truth. But at times, situational ethics, oh, it's okay to lie for this or okay to lie for that. No, it's not. Moral correctness, it embraces righteousness. It's spiritual. The word makes us complete. Truly furnished, it said in verse 17, equipped not to selfish desire, but to all good works that help us selflessly employ our life for God and others. Integrate the scriptures into your heart and life, and it will set you aflame to help others. This word of God that we've talked about today, we're to have faith in the scriptures, but faith in of the scriptures, faith in the scriptures. And the Bible says the just shall live by faith. My friend, you hold in your hands the preserved word of God. It ought to have an effect on you. It ought not just to sit on a bookshelf like any other book, but this Bible ought to change and penetrate your life and help you to live a life pleasing to God. My friend, it's God's word. It's not man's word. It's God's word. Today, I hope and pray that you understand the importance of the Word of God, that truly it impacts your life, and it helps you to live a life pleasing to God. At the end of the day, you've heard me say it many a times, there's only two choices on the shelf, pleasing God or pleasing self. 
Thank you for taking the time to stop by and to watch this video. May God bless you. I know it was a video with a lot of information. Watch it over again if you need to. In the description below will be downloadable notes that you can fill in a blank and follow along with as we go through this video. Thank you for taking the time. May God bless you. And we hope to see you here at Bible Baptist Church here in El Reno on 1440 South Country Club Road. Have a great day and may God bless you. Thanks for tuning in.